Morning everybody, nice Friday morning again. Sun's out as you can see I have succumbed. It's a lovely sunny day out there and it does make me look as if I'm in a prison or something. The light lighting's a bit off but we'll manage. Um, it's a lovely sunny day but my gosh it's a bitter wind. It really is cold out there which is wonderful for walking. Lovely walking weather but unfortunately not too good for sitting down filming so I've succumbed. I'm indoors. Right. Matters are rising then. Let's get down to work. Bit to get through again today. On the last uh, vlog, we had a quick look at the garden, which is uh, just in its final throes. But I had a walk around this morning, and if you look very carefully, there's signs of new life. It started already. Next year started already, folks. It's brilliant, isn't it? Love it. Right. Matters are rising then. Aircraft noise. You may remember that got brought up in the last vlog. Trev Joyce has commented on the subject of noisy aircraft flying overhead I'm a private pilot oh yes and belong to a club at Gloucester Stoughton Airport uh-huh therefore in the past it's quite likely that I've been the culprit ah Trev ah, you're owning up I need to revalidate my license but I may think twice about doing so if you're going to get an anti-aircraft weapon <laughs> It was a threat, wasn't it, that was issued on the last vlog. But uh, Trev, you'll be all right. Friends of the channel will get an exemption, mate. You'll, you'll be all right. We'll have to work out some sort of IFF system so we can tell friend from foe. But friends, friends of the channel will be safe. <laughs> you'll be pleased to hear. Well done. Thanks for fessing up, Trev. Club Sport 911. Ooh, it doesn't give his name. My wife, who's a great garden lover, Love the walk around your garden and ask, are you hedgehog friendly? Well, of course we're hedgehog friendly, yes. They taste a treat. Oh, did, did, I, say that? did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, of course. No, 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 no. Only joking. I think, think I've just lost the viewer. <laughs> Only joking. Yeah, we, we are hedgehog friendly and we've actually got one wanders about somewhere. We find his droppings, but we've yet to see the, uh, the hedgehog. But yeah, he's about and we are hedgehog friendly, honest. Jim Nichols, amazing how fast the seasons change. Your garden was almost unrecognisable as the one we saw last time. I know, you get a few days cold weather and actually a lot. Lionel and Mary Travels. You're very knowledgeable with the plant names. I usually ask Mary, Lionel, <laughs> what makes you think I don't, mate? Uh, I'd love to think I didn't, but I do. Yes, I have to... Uh, Ask advice here and there. Now, James Weeks, James comes from Canada, as you well know. Uh, and Broadway was mentioned in the last vlog. And James remembers, many years ago, a friend and I went to England for our March break. She insisted on visiting the countryside. I don't think James was too keen at the time. I think he'd rather stay in London. So we stayed at the Broadway Hotel. Being carless, we had the train from Paddington to Morton in the Marsh, then a cab from the station to Broadway. The next morning we were due to head back to London and then back to Toronto. I asked the girl at reception if she called it a cab, but she said because of the Cheltenham Festival, the chances of a cab were very slim. Because James at the time didn't know what the Cheltenham Festival was, <laughs> but he tried to look knowledgeable as he says. But yes, of course it's a horse racing uh, festival, isn't it? So when that uh, descends on town, the place just locks up solid. So yeah, I understand. So at a loss, we decided to walk to Morton. Grief, James. Suffice to say the walk was a bit of a slog. I should think it was, especially the hill out of Broadway. I shouldered most of the luggage. What a gent you are. What a gentleman you are. It was a nice warm March day and we did have a lovely walk, but I was puffing a bit when we got to the station. <laughs> puffing. I think I'd have been in cardiac arrest. Goodness me. Somewhere along the way, my passport fell out of my bag. Oh, no. The next day was spent at Canada House, convincing them I was who I said I was, so I could get an expedited replacement. Every St. Patrick's Day, I recall that adventure. You, you don't say whether you recall it with fondness or not, James. <laughs> oh, dear. Sue Mac MacArthur, who's our official virtual mascot, and actually uh, lives with James, Hello Ron, thanks for letting me visit some kind of school holiday today. So we're heading out for a walk now. Yeah, enjoy your walk. Enjoy your walk. Right, the film, uh, last week's film, Guiding Power. 
Simon the hairy golfer, of course. Unsuitable for motors. Sounds like a challenge to me, Ron. <laughs> it would to you, Simon. <laughs> David Bennett says, Out here in rural Essex, that unsuitable road would not only be considered perfectly suitable, but it would probably be an improvement on many of the others. <laughs> not just us then. Oh, good. Michael from Poland. Beautiful Cotswold countryside, which unfortunately for me is only a memory now. Your adventures bring it all flooding back. Oh, I'm pleased about that. Yeah, happy days, Michael, happy days. He says over there in Poland, winter's already arrived. Temperature's rarely above uh, plus three with bitter wind. Yeah, well, I think we're just getting that coming across now, Michael, it looks like. Lionel and Mary's travels. Lionel says, I, I said I'd never heard of guiding, but Mary, who knows all things Cotswolds, replied, she'd taken me through it several times. <laughs> So I have to take her word for that. Well, yes, of course you do. You're ruled, you're ruled by the same petticoat government as the rest of us, I think. Do as you're told. Andrew Merriman, how nice to see an area that is a time capsule. It could easily have been 1921 or 1821. Yeah, that's one of those rare Cotswold villages with very little change. Brilliant. Peter Smith, because of course, Andrew is our resident expert on railways. And it's in technical railways, Andrew's your man. And Peter Smith says, Ron, I wonder if Andrew has ever considered entering Mastermind with Old Railways as his specialist subject. If not, he should. I, I agree. You'd walk it, Andrew. Perfect. Vintage Trains and Abandoned Railways. This is our Ron, of course. A lovely video and walk which brought back lots of happy memories for me. I did a lot of forestry and amenity establishment work for the Guiting Manor Trust in the 1970s. I met Mr Cochrane on several occasions. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a man. Brilliant, Ron. Peter Hopkins said, I had a lot of family around there once. Now all popping stones in the cemetery. Jim Nichols has the honour of being the last comments of the week. Thanks, Ron. A lovely walk. A bit tougher than you expected, I think. Yeah, I would have to admit to that uh, towards the end there, Jim. A bit like the way I used to walk to school 70 odd years ago. Wow. It was three miles uphill going and four miles uphill coming back. <laughs> Times were hard in those days, he says. <laughs> it sounds like they were. Okay, next week's film, Broom Junction. No, I know you've never heard of it. Uh, this was forwarded to me or suggested to me by Dean, who said, get up there quick because they're fencing it off. So I did get up there uh, quick, which is a long time ago now. Uh, but yeah, they were fencing it off. But I managed to get some film there, get it done. And it's quite uh, a unique finding amongst that as well, if you hang on with it. It's very good. There's some work there for Andrew to do, hopefully. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, quite an adventure, I think. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that is the, uh, the film, which is Broom Junction next week. Uh, the film club... This week, we're still rolling along with uh, the film club, just about. Um, we've just passed Remembrance Day, Remembrance Sunday, Remembrance Time. Uh, and some years ago, uh, my wife, her sister, myself and my wife's sister's husband, uh, Michael and Pam, all went to uh, Flanders to visit the girl's granddad. Now, he hadn't had many visits up till then, and that's a sadly lacking. But yes, we've been out there, had a look around, and this was some f footage that I filmed out there. Um, the whole film is on my channel somewhere. This is just a few extracts from it. I hope you'll enjoy it. Meanwhile, I'll see you at Broome next week. Next Friday, as per usual, don't be late. Heading into town, going that way back to the hotel. This afternoon we're uh, taking care of business. We're going to visit Grandad's last resting place.
the unspoken agreement is to stand back, let the granddaughters come be reunited with their granddad on their own. gently falls. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you. in, in
American. They always take their dead back and bury them at Arlington. Didn't want this one. Originally born in Britain, but was a naturalised American. Another work day, and almost as many head cases as during the rush. Very bad ones. Many more abundant. Our first try with the magnets, uh, unsuccessful. Our team really is working very well. Before he got as bad as this, he could see them, and they made him cry. He knew that he had been decorated in extremis because he was going to die, and he did not want to die. He sought and sought all the while the general decorated. Flanders fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie, in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. 